Welcome back to the Queen City News Now. Hurricane season is quickly approaching and forecasters with the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration say it'll be an extremely aggressive few months for storms. They're predicting 17 to 25 named storms in the Atlantic this year with 8 to 13 becoming hurricanes of those. The average between 19 to 1991 and 2020 is 14 tropical storms and seven hurricanes. But record warm sea surface temperatures are factoring into the potential above average hurricane season. Joining us this morning to talk more about this outlook and of course the upcoming hurricane season, Dr. Matthew Easton with UNC Charlotte. Uh, doc, Dr. Easton, thank you for joining us this morning. Absolutely. Pleasure to be here. Absolutely. So we see these numbers behind me, 17 to 25 uh, named storms, 8 to 13 of which can become hurricanes, uh, 4 to 7 with the potential to become major hurricanes. Uh, Dr. Easton, this is the most aggressive outlook NOAA has put out when it comes to a hurricane season, uh, notably uh, the 2020-10 season called for 14 to 23. So my first question is, do you agree with this outlook? Absolutely. This is um, a, a season where all of the ingredients that really kind of control the numbers and the severity of hurricanes are, are lining up. Um, we, we've got a combination of a transition from El Nino to La Nina. And when that happens, what that does is it, it impacts the upper level winds over the Atlantic. Uh, and so during La Nina, instead of um, basically, I guess, during El Nino, it usually will rip apart the storms. But during a La Nina, it basically just pushes them along and helps them to intensify. And so between La Nina and then very warm waters out over the, the tropical Atlantic, and of course, uh, hurricanes get their, their fuel from, from the warm waters. So we really just have a, a lot of, of, of ingredients in place to, to have very, very active hurricane season. Absolutely. And we're looking at the graphic right now, which shows that going from an El Nino uh, into the La Nina as we transition into that. Uh, so we don't have the El Nino with the wind shear to kill those storms that develop. But you mentioned the sea surface temperatures. What are you seeing with that and how that plays a factor into this hurricane season? Yeah, so the sea surface temperatures, as you can see on the graphic, they're already quite warm uh, and they're just going to get warmer uh, as the, the summer progresses and the, the warming from the sun. Um, they're going to start uh, extending all the way across the Atlantic to Africa, uh, mm -hmm. where a lot of the kind of the, the seedling systems will come off and then turn into hurricanes. And so um, we can see a lot of uh, systems developing early uh, and therefore having plenty of time to intensify into those major category three, four and five uh, hurricanes on the, the Saffir Simpson scale. So uh, it's definitely uh, something to keep an eye on and, and keep a, a watch for uh, throughout this entire season. Now, Dr. Easton, we we're talking about the sea surface temperatures, the lack of wind shear, which is known as a, a tropical storm killer. It seems as though we have all the factors working in favor of tropical storm development through hurricane season. If, is there anything that could work in our favor of limiting the, the tropical activity throughout the hurricane season? Anything else that could maybe work in our favor? Yeah, there, there is one thing, and that would be um, kind of a, a moder moderating factor is uh, dust, Saharan dust that comes off of the, uh, the west coast of Africa, and that tends to suppress hurricanes and weaken them. Uh, and so that would be probably the one one factor. But unfortunately, it's, it's not going to be a, a, a huge factor this year because when there's warm sea surface temperatures, that also means the Bermuda high um, is going to be weaker. And when the Bermuda high is weaker, then there's less Saharan dust. So the Saharan dust will, will help moderate them a little bit, but um, not, not a lot. It's unfortunately going to be a, a very active hurricane season. Yeah, needing the Saharan dust to help us out. And here we are, not even at the start of hurricane season, already seeing uh, some of that tropical development with one area of interest. Uh, Dr. Easton, what should folks take from this? Folks at home who see this outlook and the, the potential for an aggressive hurricane season, already seeing an area of interest for uh, our Na National Hurricane Center to investigate on. What should folks at home heed? I, what they should really focus on is just be aware throughout the season. Um, and be prepared, uh, kind of here in the Charlotte area, uh, probably our biggest threat would be once the storms have made landfall, they'll produce a lot of rain, a little bit of wind, um, but there's a, a chance for some power outages and, and, and localized flooding. So they should be prepared for that. If they have friends and family along the coast, make sure they communicate with them and, and have a, an evacuation plan for their, their friends and family. Um, but in general, just, just be aware and, and, and 
be prepared to, to take steps if need be. Absolutely. Dr. Matthew Easton, uh, Associate Professor of Atmospheric Science with UNC Charlotte. We appreciate your expertise. We appreciate your time.